welcome back to my channel firewall gan in this v6 upgrade part 2 we will going to install two v6 gateway and configure mds mds domains configure v6 gateways v6 clusters and configure vs uh, virtual systems so let's start with uh, v6 gateway this will be uh, a gateway installation and uh, we all know how to install the gateways like the initial gateway installation so without wasting time let's see and we'll talk again when we when we complete gateway installation part Please note for the gateway installation you need to give the SICK key so this is the steps where you give the SICK and SICK is your one time password you can give to the to the security management server and later on you will use that password to establish a communication between your management server and the gateway.
So guys, let's log into the MDS. I'm just putting my password. Login. Just wait for a minute. So it launches. Okay. So you have to log into the MDS. Proceed. Initialization. Initializing services. Loading data. Launching the application. So we already installed our gateway. Uh, now we are going to do the thick communication between the gateways. So that management server and the gateway will communicate to each other. So if you see on my screen, uh, you are able to see we have one MBS server with IP address 192.168.1.254. So basically how MBS is work, uh, MBS is your multi-domain server. So here you need to create a different domain and those domains uh, actually uh, give you the you know the visibility in terms of smart dashboard and you know their GUI application so first step you have to create the domain these domains are nothing but your smart uh, servers smart management servers so let's see how to create that it's very simple you if you see here just go here from here say domain okay enter the domain name i am giving it as a say sms1 uh, give the sms1 and i'll give the vsx1 i will add domain details server details so multi domain server mds1 where we are configuring this thing the domain name will be the sms1 dash vsx1 and the name will be the sms1 vsx1 server okay uh, the ip address you have option you know here to define the range i mean uh, you can give the ip address from here or you can give it from the uh, from the mds domain range I'll, I'll show you that option first before coming here. Uh, if you come, if you if you go to MDS and here, if you say edit, here if you see there is an IPv4 address which is, which is your domain address. First is establish and there is an option called multi-domain. Here you can define the range 192, 168. Say one dot I said twenty, and the last IP address is one ninety two one sixty eight one thirty. So the SMS or the domain uh, which we will going to create will take the IP from this range only. Okay, login setting and everything. Uh, I will skip me as the default. So click OK here. Okay, second time. Okay, done. Now again, come back here. <coughs> See here, uh, it's showing something. Like session one has made some changes. So let's publish it so that uh, uh, it will be active when we are going to uh, create our domain. Now we will create our domain. Say domain. Now give the domain name. Say S ms1 as vsx1 now add here as i said you can give the ip address or if you want it will take it from the range okay so this is the first ip address it took if you create one more uh, domain it will take the next uh, next ip address so it's up to you how you want to configure then ok now go to the trusted client who will access this 
domain or SMS. So you can you know restrict it to the uh, your uh, uh, admin IP or uh, admin system. But for the demo purpose, I am putting it as any. Okay, just say add. Okay, let's do this. It's here. Additional information is like uh, if you want to give the name of the admin and everything, you can give it here. I don't bother about it for now for the demo purpose. So I am just saying okay. Are you sure you want to continue here? Yeah. And see, this is done. Okay, it's in the process. Let me show you. If you see here, see, this is creating the domain. And I am again saying the domain is nothing but your SMS. Okay. Uh, I'll be creating another video where uh, it will, you know, explain you all the concepts of MBS. I got this requirements from multiple, you know, engineers that it okay, create a lab video and we wanted to see how this MBS works and the VSX works and, uh, you know, uh, updates perform on this uh, VSX and MBS. I already, uh, you know, created one video where you uh, see how you can, you know, do the upgrade for the MBS. Now this series is a VSX series where you will be able to see the VSX upgrade. So guys please stay tuned and I am requesting you if you are not subscribed my channel so please subscribe my channel because uh, I wanted you all to be you know very good at the checkpoint firewall and uh, you know uh, go accordingly. So if you not subscribe my channel you won't be able to you know uh, get the latest and upcoming videos on the checkpoint world so yeah please subscribe my channel okay now let's continue on this video okay it's creating the domain okay one more thing i wanted to tell you if you want to create lab and you know uh, play on it, it there, there is no much requirement require i mean there is no you know uh, more requirement for that you can create the lab using you know a uh, few gigabyte of hard disk and you know few gigabyte of RAM. I have a video posted, but uh, that is more of you know into uh, giving you details in terms of you know uh, how you can create your lab within you know eight gigabyte of RAM and only two hundred gigabyte of uh, you know uh, a memory space room. So you know uh, if you like, you can go ahead and watch those videos and see how can you can create those things here uh, the more focus is on the you know uh, VSX and MBS and the, the upgrade part of the VSX so let's wait for a couple of minutes to complete this uh, domain creation usually it uh, takes uh, hardly one or two minutes to get completed uh, but uh, uh, it's now it's taking a bit of time so guys please bear with me also guys I have posted a lot of videos on you know different concepts of uh, uh, check one firewall the concepts uh, I have you know uh, trying to bring in those are like uh, you know very core level concepts of the check one firewall so most of the time you won't be able to see those concepts you know you know you know the videos you are watching so go ahead and watch those concept videos where you will see what is secure excel what is core excel how you can do the vpn troubleshooting and you know many more things also i'll be you know uh, creating lots of i mean more videos on you know different concepts on the check and firewall and those videos are like very in depth you know in terms of the you know checkpoint firewall world so uh, again I'm saying please subscribe my channel and stay tuned or with my you know uh, uh, videos so I will assure you uh, you know in a, you know in a few days time and you know watching my videos will be very good at the checkpoint firewall and you able to you know uh, resolve a lot of problems related to the checkpoint firewall and you able to easily configure the this firewall and uh, 
uh, as per my experience, the checkpoint firewall is the best firewall so far uh, what we have in the market, and uh, there is you know huge requirement for the checkpoint engineer uh, who who is good at the checkpoint firewall. So you know if you want to run well, uh, of course the checkpoint firewall is your best buddy. To be honest. Okay, now it's uh, 90 percent. 90 percent got created. Awesome. If you see, it got created 100 percent now, and you will be able to see here. All right. This is your domain, and guys, uh, this is the global domain. The global domain has the concept where you can, you know, configure whatever things in a global domain that you can push. To different domains, you know, from the single-handed. Uh, I have a small video. Uh, it's like a five-minute video on a global uh, domain. Uh, just go ahead and watch that video and see how the policy we, you know, create on a global firewall or sorry, global uh, domain, and you can, you know, push into this uh, uh, this different domain, right? So for now, I have created a uh, one uh, domain SNS. Let's uh, jump and log into this. You have to just right click it and click the next. And in background, you will be able. Yeah, in in background, you will be able to connect uh, this SNS easily. All right. It's now if you see my screen, it's getting connected to one hundred twenty or one point twenty. So again, one more point. Like because of people don't know about you know uh, this concept, so they might think like I know we need to have a separate OS for the SMS and everything. So it's not like that. NDS has the purpose to give you this uh, domain, you know, and. Of course, one important thing, depending on your license, the license usually, you know, uh, gives you authority to how many domains you will configure, right? Uh, according to that, you can, you know, uh, uh, I mean, according to license, you have a number of domains uh, that much you can configure. So, for the trial license, uh, uh, we'll be creating one or two domains, uh, or maybe <coughs> this trial license gives you more, but for this lab, the two domains will be sufficient. But keep in mind, looking at the license, you will be able to see how many domains you can configure. Okay. Now proceed. Now let's see. So this is now you know uh, initializing the services to the domain, and it will be get connected. One more important thing I wanted to tell you here, like what I have seen in my you know uh, 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 work sort of environment. Sometimes. Whenever you connect your uh, uh, domain from the MDS, like the way I am just connecting, you are not able to get connected and it gets failed. Okay, that was the you know a basic thing uh, we need to address first is that we need to have the relevant ports which you know involved to have this communication access. The policy for those ports need to be allowed in the gateway. Okay, to you know get this thing sorted, what you need to do, you have to give your source IP as your MDS or your gen server IP address and destination IP address of the uh, address is your domain IP address. Uh, I'm talking about the in a lock server, what you want to put the filter. Source is your MDS or the gen server. Destination is your uh, uh, your domain IP address and uh, you have to see the traffic over there. If the gateway is blocking the traffic you, um, on a particular port, you need to allow those particular port uh, into your uh, uh, policy, and then you're good to go, right? Okay, so we just uh, reach to this uh, SMS uh, inside the smart dashboard. Let's uh, do this. Now, uh, next step is you need to go for your six communication between the gateways from this SMS. So, for that, see here, you have to come here, 
and there is an option if you want to uh, do the simple gateway you have to select this gateway or if you want to do the clustering you can do this clustering like with the simple gateway but this lab is particularly for the VSX so just come here VSX and what you want to achieve here if you want to just do the you know simple communication or you want to form the cluster it's up to you see uh, I can do the simple communication and then form cluster it will again take time and it will again involve multiple videos so for the time being you know uh, what I am going to do I will directly go ahead and create a cluster and it will be easy for you guys also you know to see so I am creating a cluster and why creating the cluster it will ask me for the six communication right let's give the name vsx1 IP address 192.168.1.10 which we have configured for our gateway. Select the basic cluster platform. So here we take one secure platform cluster Excel, take one cluster Excel virtual system load saving, cross in system, check one Excel, these are the old ones. So uh, depends like how uh, configuration you want. If you want this thing in a you know, uh, virtual system load sharing mode. It's also called as a VSLS, oh sorry, VSLS, yeah, that's true. And uh, it's like you know, a uh, cluster in an active active state. I mean, uh, your cluster and the gateways, they both will be active active at the same time. Or if you want to configure in HA mode, you can go ahead and configure like that, okay, with the option. They are given 6.6 .6 platform plus Excel. They have to change the name here, secure platform, because uh, it is no more secure platform. So for uh, this uh, uh, lab, we will go ahead with the cluster Excel uh, HA. Okay. I have another video uh, where I have configured the same thing in I know virtual system load sharing mode. So if you want to see that part also you know I will put a link in the description go ahead and watch that video and you will be understand how it is configured ok let's do this ok let this ok that is fine we don't have IP address uh, IPv6 ok got stuck somewhere alright so we don't have IPv6 that is fine. Next, shared interface, shared interface, so separate interface, configuration interface, virtual system creation template, shared interface, all virtual system data will be shared a single external interface and have a separate interface, inter interface, separate interface, each virtual system data will have its own separate external and inter interface. So, uh, depending on your environment, uh, whatever you have. Uh, you have to select this option uh, basically a separate interface gives you you know uh, uh, you know flexibility where you can define your uh, your external and internal interface separately uh, and those are you know for uh, different every time with respect to your whatever the uh, you know, uh, VSX gateway you are configuring or virtual systems you are going to configure. Okay. Uh, so, uh, for this lab, uh, I am going to select this all virtual system gateway will be shared a single external interface and I have a separate inter interface. But if you want to see this option, I have a video already I told you that video for the VSX. I have selected this option and you will see how it works. Okay. Now, say next here. Define the member of this VSX cluster member. So let's define that. Okay. Okay. I made one mistake. I'll, I'll show you what I have made. So here I have given the name. Uh, I have given the IP address of uh, my gateway. Actually, this is a virtual IP address. So I am giving as a 12. 12 is the virtual IP address. Consider. 10 is the first gateway IP address and 11 is the second one and 12 is your virtual IP address. So for that guys, so now here we come back. Let's go next. 
now add the gateways <laughs> your gateway name is like a gateway one or i will say vsx1 vsx1 and i say this is one and two 168 1.10 and uh, activation key the activation key we have given at the time of creation of this gateway and in July so this is established so guys also remember you don't have to you know get confused that uh, the VSX gateway uh, as the name suggests VSX it is some some sort of different OS or different gateway you need to have it's not like that you need to have the same gateway OS what we generally uh, download for the normal gateway but it's it's how you create it okay now say okay now let's add the another one so cluster number name vsx2 uh, then i say this 192.168.1.11 give the activation key the one which we have set up while creating the gateway say initialize it got trusted ok now next now it will ask the VSX cluster interface physical interface you use it use the interface you want to use as a VLAN trunk so we all know the VLAN interfaces connect the virtual system to the VLAN switch or the you know uh, to the router so if you wanted to you know uh, have the uh, your interface which is connecting to the switch you can define here or you can define uh, which uh, interface is connected as a VLAN trunk so what do you mean by VLAN trunk is something uh, the traffic which you know all VLAN traffic is passing using this interface so for example if you have a switch and that switch uh, uh, is connected to your gateway and only one uh, cable is there from where you have to pass all the traffic related to the different VLAN what we are going to configure on your gateway that interface you have to select as a VLAN term ok so here I am selecting for example say management interface but I think when I select the management interface as a VLAN term it will give me an error so I will not select that let's select ETH1 as your VLAN term let's see how it goes ok select the interface that will use as a spec synchronization this is for the clustering purpose so let's see interface 3 alright it's asking for the IP address give any IP address I am giving like 10.1.1.1 on uh, the mask is 255.255.255.0 so this IP address is something where the your clustering syncing will ha happen ok so in a real life world uh, according to your topology you have to give the IP address but for now for the demo purpose I am giving any IP address keep in mind so 2 255 255 sorry 255 255 255 0 next now select interface which used to be all virtual system for external communication so virtual systems which we are going to configure and from those virtual systems will pick which you know interface as the exist interface we need to define that if you don't know the virtual system what it is a virtual system is a virtual security and a routing domain that provides the functionality of a security gateway so it's like a security gateway only having the you know uh, routing and uh, uh, you know uh, security uh, capabilities with them so it's like you know uh, a separate firewall only ok or a uh, gateway uh, which gives you fully you know firewall functionality and the VPN facilities multiple virtual system can be run on concurrently on a single VSX gateway so on a one VSX gateway you can create a multiple virtual system so that's what it's asking if you create a more than one virtual system 
uh, from which voltage system uh, the which interface it will take to get that uh, exit path as i shown you the other option that it, it was asking you know uh, uh, which uh, uh, select the shared interface so we, we have selected one that's why it's not taking the one interface as external path but if you want to have your virtual system to take a different you know uh, path for every time uh, going out for example eth1 is taking for the vs1 and eps2 is taking for the vs2 so that option you have to select uh, when we start with this configuration so now i am giving it as a say uh, management interface no it's not management it's eps2 next you can't select the management interface because that is a dedicated interface to communicate with the MBS. Okay. These are the VSX plus the management space for the management access rules. So if if you whatever rules you are going to select is by default imposed, you know, on your uh, gateway. So you have to uh, as per your requirement you have to select. By default you will get any any job. But before that, if you want to allow some certain ports like SNMP, SSH. Uh, ICMP SATPS. So you have to select. For here, I am selecting uh, all uh, sources, you know, any and destination is your gateway. So this is nothing but your your self rule kind of thing. So which are the things you know you are allowing to hit to your gateway. But the only thing is that the source is any here. You can define whichever source you want to hit. Okay. So this is nothing but the admin rule. If you don't know about what is the stealth rule and uh, you know what is this cleanup rule, uh, just watch my video. I have given very good explanation on that as well. Okay. Now, if you want to create a source, you know, exit, you can create. Okay. For that purpose, I'm just giving whatever I'm saying here. Okay. Next, you are allowed all the things. That's what it's saying. Yes. Yeah. Continue and let's finish. So now. Okay, the report something is wrong, wrong. No operation report available. Awesome. You have finished the configuration, but no report is there. Operation is with error. But what is the error? <laughs> okay. So here we are going to take one as your trunk. Let's see. Uh, we don't have anything here. Define as a trunk, or we are not facing the VLAN. So I'm not giving anything. Let's see. Okay. 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 Let's finish it up. Okay, you have been operation on the report. Operation condition. Yeah. Why? 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 Communicating. You can just look good. That is also look good. Mm -hmm. Let's give the IP address of our range, for example, 192.168.1. Uh, but it will again give you error. So let's keep it with the same 10.1.1. .1 .1. mm -hmm. So in this case, it will use to also system connect external. Let's let this. Let's see what happens. It is giving an error. Okay. I think that is some issue with the VSX, I believe. Uh, because I don't think so. Let's finish it. Okay. Click the finish button on any person. Where we are going wrong, all of this can get the situation in the case. That is fine. This is your option. He is already used. Okay. So, guys, let me rectify this and I will again join you.
so uh, just few changes I have made. Let's see it works. Uh, what I did, I just selected the same thing. The only thing is that here the IP address 192.168.1.25. Uh, that is what I have given. Initially, I think I have given the SMS IP address over here as a VSX plus IP address. So sorry for that. That was my mistake. Let's go next. Next, the first is established. Now I'm not selecting any uh, uh, VLAN trunk here because we are not uh, sending any VLANs from our gateway, or we are not creating any gateway. Uh, sorry, VLAN. Next, uh, let's see. Select the interface that we'll use as a state synchronization. Uh, let's do ETS3 and quickly give the IP address 10.1.1.1 and uh, net mask 255.255. Next IP address 10.1.1.2 and next mask 255.255.255.0. Next, okay, select interface with use as a virtual system for external interface. Let's select as a ETH1 as external interface. Select all the rules by default. Okay, now next, yes, I have select any, now let's change it. Okay, now it's getting in progress. I think the IP address which I have given to this cluster was the management IP address. Because of that, it got filled, but it was not showing us everywhere that that IP address you have selected is, you know, used somewhere. So always guys keep in mind don't be in a hurry while you're configuring all these things you need to select the correct IP addresses uh, and you should have your IP addresses in front of you so you will be able to select right IP addresses so now uh, it's creating and installing the default policy which we have created and I believe it will work now let's wait for a couple of minutes and let's see how it goes uh, this video will be a little bit longer than the other videos because I am trying to give you you know correct all the features with the VSX and I am setting each and everything on that so I don't want you guys to wait for another video to come up to see the next thing so guys just bear with me Let's see, uh, once this VSX policy gets installed, uh, we will be creating the virtual system as well. And uh, once that is created, uh, we will show you the uh, clustering. Few terms, uh, I, few definition I wanted to tell you while this operation gets progressed. One virtual system I have just you know referred. There is something called virtual system in a bridge mode. Uh, that is something like a virtual system in a bridge mode implemented a native layer to bridging instead of the IP routing. Usually, if you want to have your virtual systems only communicate and mirror the traffic and you know just see the how the traffic is passing from without doing any uh, sort of layer thing, uh, layer three activities on it. There is an option which is called virtual system in a bridge mode. All right, this lets you easily and transparently deploy a virtual system in the existing network environment and topology and uh, without reconfiguring your routing schema so if you wanted to have a new virtual system placed in, in between uh, your existing virtual system and which will not impact your existing environment for that you are good to use this option virtual system in a bridge mode uh, while configuring the virtual system I will be showing you where it is but for now, just to understand the concept. Next, uh, virtual system load sharing VSLS. It is a load sharing, you know, offers significant performance advantage while you know providing failover for individual virtual systems using multiple gateways instead of a single gateway, which significantly improves your performance and you know VPN capabilities and security server policy installation. I that's uh, everything. So 
those are like you know check on firewall if you configure the cluster those are in active active mode like that you know you know vsx world you can configure your virtual systems in an active active state and that term they refer it as a vsls this is you know a very often question asked during the uh, 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 checkpoint uh, firewall interviews what is this uh, vsls so it's simple term but a uh, uh, very important thing and there is one more thing uh, which i just explained i have shown you that a dedicated management interface uh, we call it as a dmi that is a checkpoint recommended that you know you can use dmi for the management traffic only which segregate your management traffic from you know uh, routing your production traffic and in from the give uh, the uh, the way uh, the different way from your production traffic which usually enhances your performance and the uh, you know end user experience all together so right now it's pushing your policy and switch to pushing external virtual switch configuration so we we don't have anything like a virtual switch and anything uh, I mean like that so don't bother about this thing it's just the part of the uh, policy push configuration and also if you see here you will see there is a cluster already creation you know to place vsx cluster okay reinstalling the default policy vsx cluster vsx okay let's let's get reinstalled okay taking time but it's uh, worth to watch okay now the operation got completed successfully just close this part and you will be seeing the virtual cross the configuration here uh you are seeing this cross mark i believe this is because of your license thing same okay you can see on our screen as well uh if you don't have a vsx license it gives it all but okay now it's come up green that means the license trial license is working for us so without wasting time let's create the virtual systems uh, for this virtual gateway the option is from here only just go to the vsx come to the virtual system and it will ask you the name i'll just give a new like virtual system 1 and uh, this is the important thing so if you have a multiple vsx gateway configured and if you want to you know uh, have that virtual system to configure or pass from a particular vsx gateway or a cluster you have to select this option and as i remember i told you the definition of the virtual system in a bridge mode it is this one if you select this option this virtual system will configure without you know routing functionality right and there is something called virtual creation template create a virtual system. if you want to have a same similar sort of template for the rest of the virtual systems you can configure the same here so let's click next now here i will explain you about the server interface it is eth1 where from the the traffic will go out for this virtual system you need to give the ip address just give the ip address which is in your range and just give say 15 network mask 255255550 default gateway is optional i am not giving it but as per your configuration whatsoever it is the next hook will be your switch or the router which whichever it is for this virtual system you have to give that default gateway here right we don't have ipv6 so i am skipping that internal interface is extended so we have flexibility to configure the internal interface so we have a eth2 sending and the vlan tag if you have uh, any vlan configuration for this you know if you have a uh, multiple vlans need to be here you can give those vlan tags here let's you ip address for internal interface internal interface ip address should be the different one so let's do 172 uh 172 okay i'm giving any random ip address so you can do whatever you like but for the lab purpose i'm giving this ip address 255 
di situ list to oke okay. next and just finish this is the simplest way to create a virtual system guys uh, now it will create the virtual system so you can create a multiple virtual systems one by one just wait for the process to be created it take hardly few minutes a lot of few minutes few seconds to uh, get created this virtual system okay operation is in progress let's wait okay taking some time i think it will take a minute or two max because it's again uh, you know uh, a different sort of gateways you are creating all right generating the virtual system topology establishing the graph okay it's completed if you want to see the report you can see all the phases from here but we are good so just close it now let's see if we can create one more virtual system quickly virtual system so vs2 sorry vs2 okay next Give the IP address 192.161.1.51. Net mask 255.255.255.0. Okay. Internal IP address, internal interface. Okay. So now we don't have a interface left. So I won't be able to show you the, you know, a more virtual system creation. But if I, you know, go back to the virtual system and, uh, you know. add interfaces from here okay it will show you those things uh, i mean those interfaces here but for uh, this demo purpose we required at least a one virtual system we just wanted to see how the load balance and in the active passive things are active stand by things happen and the main purpose of this demo is your you know uh, upgradeation of the or upgrade part of the virtual system uh, not virtual system or virtual gateway so i'm just skipping this part and uh for now guys